actually wait for the start of the race. Speedy Chicken coming out of pole position. Let's see if he can get away to a good start. They are underway. It looks like Moldovic is stuck on the line, and we've got people running into him. Bilson had nowhere to go into the back of him. He's gone around. We've got Bird against the wall. We've got Imager against the wall. Mojo into the side of Risky. There is just too much uh, to try and keep up with everything that's happened here. Absolute bedlam off the start line with Moldovic unable to get going. As we look at a replay from Crenshaw, who started in last place, you can see the chaos that he's uh, having to avoid. Everyone smashing into each other. And he's taken avoiding action on Jason and Mojo. In fact, Crenshaw's done very well to get through that pack. There was just cars spraying everywhere there. What a start to the race. Moldovic, of course, being in fourth position. It is a well-known uh, issue at the moment that in online lobbies in Gran Turismo, you can get stuck on the line, uh, or if it's a rolling start, you get stuck in auto drive. So there is a part, I suppose, in real life racing, people obviously do stall or burn the clutch out on the line, get stuck on the line. This is not an unusual uh, thing to see, even in real life racing. So uh, you can see Bilson there after his uh, really terrible start, getting spun around from 15th position. He's gonna have a long race ahead of him to try and come back and recover some decent championship points. So Speedy Chicken back up the front in first position. Looks like he's got away fairly cleanly. Sim in second place, back to Hippie Head. Uh, Piosco fourth, charged in fifth. And, uh, and I'm pushing charge as hard as I can there in sixth place. And Staniel as well. Then there's a little bit of a gap back to eighth position, currently held by Mojo. And uh, in fact, Staniel, even Staniel is just a little bit back there. So it depends how the race goes, how the pace is. Um, but we'll see how we go. And uh, I just have a cheeky little look up the inside of Charge there, decided not to go ahead with that. And Skater's actually gone past Mojo at this point. Skater is, uh, is a fairly quick driver actually, so it'll be interesting to see if he can bridge that gap and, uh, and where he can recover to. But yeah, it seems like every time I discuss Willie, uh, who is BR Bilson for those of you who don't know, um, he seems to have gotten a bad race start and has to come through from, from the rear. So he'll be, uh, he'll be hoping soon to get a clean start away from a race in this Spec 7 series. It does make for good racing though, so hopefully we can see something come of, uh, of this for him and everyone that got affected by that pretty horrendous start to this race. But we are now on lap two, and as we go on board charged, you can see that the front of the field is actually fairly evenly gapped out. Um, so no one's really pushing each other yet, probably just settling into a bit of a rhythm. Tire wear and fuel burn here, as we established in practice sessions, was a little bit of an issue. So yeah, people probably just trying to um, keep it calm. In fact, you can see Sims come right up on the back of Speedy. So I'm not sure if Speedy Chicken actually made uh, an error there, or if he, uh, or if Sims just on a charge early. But either way. I know a lot of people were worrying about tyre wear and trying to preserve that as well as obviously monitoring fuel. So a little bit of short shifting, lift and coast into the corners. There's a few different ways you can do it uh, without actually doing it. But Sim is looking very, very racy. In fact, he's gone up the inside there. Will he run wide and give Speedy Chicken that dance, that chance back? Um, no, the answer to that. Sim has actually taken the lead from Speedy. So this is good. It's good to see Speedy Chicken, obviously one of the quicker guys in the group, had a lot of success. Uh, last round in the first round of the series uh, so it'll be good to see Sim hopefully push him right to the very end uh, and in fact even just building a bit of a gap but again we don't know what sort of strategy Speedy Chicken is running he may well be doing the short shift uh, trying to preserve fuel trying to preserve tires and it's one of those things that later on in the race if he is short shifting a bit and preserving fuel at the moment um, that can come off and really pay off well uh, after the first round of pit stops because if Sim has to take on uh, maximum amount of fuel because he's just been munching up dinosaurs as much as he possibly can uh, in these little rotary powered cars, then Speedy Chicken will have to stop for less. That's, that's the, um, the nut of it. And you can see I've actually just had another cheeky look up the inside of Charged, but again, he's been able to hold it. In fact, no, we're nearly side by side at this point, so pushing hard, we are side by side. We jump on board to see how this goes. I don't have track position here, so there's not a great deal I can do. I'm gonna to have to basically just roll off a little bit. Uh, gave him a bit of racing room, let charge back through uh, on the inside there. So Piesco not getting too far away, but Hippie Head has bolted. He is in hot pursuit of the top two. So uh, he's also looking racy. Coming off a, a great win from race two of round one. Um, having had a fairly sort of slow start to the series in race one, uh, he did chalk up a win in race two and 
you know, maybe bouncing off a bit of confidence or what have you. He is doing very well in third place and not willing to just let the two in front disappear. You can see he's still there or thereabouts. Uh, and the bigger gap is really starting to form behind Hippie Head back to Piosco in fourth place. Very sideways for Speedy Chicken there. Maybe just uh, getting on the throttle a little bit too hard. Tire wear is already at this point four laps in. We're sort of looking at about 25% worn on, on the tyres that cop it the most, which is the two front tyres. Uh, they tend to take a, a bigger hit around this track. So uh, tyre wear is on eight times wear uh, and fuel burn is on the same. That's, uh, that's a consistent for the entire series. That's going to be the same in every race. So different race tracks are going to have different demands. Some race tracks are going to be very, very harsh on tyres, not so bad on fuel, uh, and other tracks will be uh, different the inverse of that so fairly evenly spaced out there just looking at the mini map in the top right hand corner you can see that mojo in ninth place is sort of sticking with with skater uh, roughly and then there's a little bit of a gap back to uh, i am three gtr or i'm a gtr however you say that i'm sure i'm sure that's not right but a little bit of a gap back to uh risky devil you can see bilson has charged on from fifth, 15th position where he was after that terrible start. He's managed to get past Risky Devil, so he's charging on back towards a top 10 position. And uh, and obviously probably, probably a little bit full of frustration and anger at the moment. He's going to be pushing very hard, so it'll be interesting to see how his tyre wear goes, if he's able to maintain this sort of pace and what position he can actually come back to during during race one. Uh, of course, if he's not able to do that well, as I say, race two is a reverse grid race. So it gives everyone the uh, opportunity to get a bit of clean air out the front and perhaps not deal with the sort of thing we saw. Although it is very hard when the person getting stuck on the line is in fourth position. You've got a whole grid. Uh, and up the inside there, we just see we just see Skater actually just shooting up the inside of Staniel. So he's already climbed his way back to seventh place. Uh, as I say, he is one of the very quick drivers, so I'd imagine he won't be too far away and he'll be uh, bearing down on the back of myself. The gap isn't huge at the moment, but right, lap three there, he did a 131.5. Anything in the 31s, I think, during race pace is actually quite good. That's a that's a fairly um, good fast lap. Piosco out well, well wide there, which gave me the opportunity to shoot up the inside, but unfortunately, I made an equally as big mistake. In fact, an even bigger mistake. And I'm dropping down the leaderboard a little bit. Skater was able to punch it up the inside. As we saw just a moment ago, he was a little bit back. So I've lost a lot of time there. And uh, Stanya was actually right on top of me as well. So um, we didn't see it there, but I did make quite a big error coming into that corner. I got all kinds of wrong. Lost a lot of time. Uh, in fact, 5.1 seconds down on my previous lap, which was that 131 I was just discussing. So I topped into the 131s, but I'm currently five seconds down on this lap. So not going very well. And uh, and now I'm actually sort of taking defensive lines to try and keep Staniel behind me, which is giving Skater uh, an opportunity to push, push ahead a little bit too. And Mojo uh, was able to close up to the back of Staniel as well. So I've just probably slowed the pace up a little bit. But you can see Piosco is still in fifth spot. So he never actually lost a spot. Uh, and as a group, we're, we're not sort of too far behind in general. But I can tell you now, Staniel, uh, he's looking at about 50% 50 wear on his front left tyre. Uh, and that's on lap six. So I reckon we're looking at around about a 13, 13 lap race, 13, 14 laps, somewhere in that vicinity. So we're approaching the halfway point uh, in the next. I, I would suspect that people would be thinking about pit stops. You can see Skater getting very wide there, very loose on the dirt. And uh, I've shot to the inside there to try and avoid any incidents and was actually able to drive past him back to sixth position. Stanu actually having a look up the inside now. Uh, he's got the line, but was he able to cut it off? No, Skater was able to just hold a little bit more, bit more pace into that corner, cut it into uh, the apex and just close the door on him there. But you can see fifth back to ninth spot. We've got some good racing going on here as a pack. And that's what you want to see in a series like this. Mojo coming in very, very deep and getting a bit sideways, but hasn't really affected his um, position or his pace a great deal. So it looks like as we sort of go through the field, a lot of people um, being able to hit the 131s once or twice, but we can see jumping forward to Speed of Chicken. In fact, Sim is the first person at the end of lap six to dive into the pits and take on some fresh tires and some fuel as well. So he is the first person to go. Um, it's always difficult to try and predict if the, uh, if trying to get an overcut or an undercut or what have you, but 
The sim obviously protective of Speedy Chicken, not knowing if he was going to pit or not. Uh, he might have made that call to go in, and that could well be why Speedy Chicken decided to keep going, as did Hippie Head. So these guys will be trying to focus now and putting in a very, very good lap. Hippie's front left tyre was really, really worn there. Um, I, I, I'd say around about 75% worn in the front left, so he's got to be suffering a fairly substantial amount of uh, understeer. But what will be interesting to see now, as I discussed earlier on in the race, uh, was Speedy Chicken trying to save a little bit of fuel? Obviously, Sim wasn't a great deal ahead of him, only a couple of car lengths in front of Speedy Chicken when he dived into the pits. So once Speedy Chicken has pitted, taken on his fuel uh, and some fresh tyres, we'll see if he was able to take on a lot less. Actually, uh, as we cut back to Bilson there, he's just lost a spot. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, he's had a bit of an issue there, but either way, he's dropped back to 12th spot, so just not, uh, not the best day for him. And Speedy Chicken here as we uh, watch him come around the final turn for the track. Is he going to pit now at the end of lap 7 or continue on again? I reckon it would be a little bit of a risk at this point. His tyres are definitely worn and no, he does dive into the pits, uh, followed by Hippie Head. So we'll see how much fuel he takes on. And uh, actually we'll cut through to Sim and just keep an eye on him and see how far out. So he's approaching the last turn now, and he's uh, gonna have been pushing pretty hard on the outlap here to try and stay in front of Speedy. But this is where the pit strategy plays out, and we'll jump on board with him so we can sort of see the live, uh, real time, where Speedy comes out. And there he is up ahead. You can see he's gained a whole lot of time there. So I would suggest either he's had an amazing in-lap and Sims had a very, very bad outlap, uh, or Speedy has been able to take on a lot less fuel, and that's actually given him a really, really commanding lead at this point over Sim. Um, a good few seconds, actually, so Sim's got it uh, cut out for him to try and come back. He was able to keep in front of Hippie, so no real major difference there between strategy, but we'll see if Hippie he can actually um, start to catch up. He's not too far behind, and as we rejoin this pack back in the middle, uh, I'm still holding down fifth position with Skater in sixth. Piosco there looks like he's just been overtaken by Skater, but very, very close. And of course, we're all on an outlap here, so it's difficult to see uh, where overtakes were made in the pits and whatnot. But this is where we're at with just a few laps, probably around about five or six laps remaining of the race. Uh, but we're all got fresh tyres. We've all uh, taken on the required, hopefully the required amount of fuel. And we'll be pushing on to see how this one goes. As we jump on board with Skater, you can see I was a little bit wide there. I've actually lost a lot of drive out of here. Uh, and we cut away, but I really feel like Skater might be able to shove it up the inside. Just trying to keep an eye on the, the leaderboard on the right-hand side. I was actually able to defend there by the looks of it. Uh, there we go as we cut back to it. He's all over the back of me, but uh, despite having that terrible run out of the turn, uh, the battle is not yet over, though. And at this point, I knew Skater was fairly fast, so I wasn't going to wasn't going to fight too hard um, to defend or do anything too stupid in terms of blocking, because what that would do is slow us both down, and it means that uh, any progress we could make towards fourth position and charged uh, would be hindered if we scrapped too much. So I remember at the at the time thinking that if Skater does put on a decent pass. Uh, I'm not going to defend too hard, I'm probably just going to try and tuck into his slipstream, go with him. Uh, I, kn I knew he had pace, I knew he was quick, and uh, sometimes that's the best method. And we've both actually run wide there, which has affected our drive. He's in the slipstream, but as I said last round, these little RX-7s, um, slipstream by the way, if you're wondering, is set to real. Of course, if you want to check out all the rules and regulations of the series, they are all listed on my website, www.charlieroscoe.com, so go over there. Find out what's happening, what uh, what all the settings in the server are and whatnot, and uh, if you're interested in joining, find out how. But just a really big difference of pace there. I tend to take that first left-hander a lot faster than Skater, um, which gives me a little bit of a break, a bit of breathing room, but it does affect my drive, and you can see he's got such a good drive there. We've found ourselves side by side again, and he's able to just maintain that. I wonder if I can dive back up the inside here and just defend that. Uh, I was not able to. He actually got good enough drive and then he was good enough on the brakes, late enough on the brakes, 
uh, to be able to cut that back into the apex and claim that position. So my tactic at this point was to try and just latch onto the back of him. Someone that I knew was a little bit faster than myself uh, at the time. I thought if I can latch onto the back and follow his lines, follow his pace, then we both we might both be able to go uh, up towards charge in fourth position. So trying to get a bit of an idea of the gap, you can see uh, Crenshaw there uh, back in back in 14th, actually um, actually not part of this battle, and there is a fair break up to charged. Unfortunately, we don't get the the gaps <coughs> on the left hand side on the leaderboard there, um, but there is a fair gap, and we cut back again to Willie, who's still in 12th position. Uh, not sure if he's having a bad time. It looks like the previous lap was a 147. That would have been an in lap, so a very very late pit stop. Uh, by Willie, but his eighth lap was a 130.9, which is an absolutely stonking lap. Um, and in fact, lap six was a 159, so maybe he did pit on lap six and he just had a, a big incident on that lap. Either way, he's not where he wants to be, but uh, at least he's going to be up the pointy end for race two. And Bert out very wide, very, very sideways there from Bert, and uh, he's able to gather it all up, just tank slapping down the straight there. But he. Uh, he has gathered it up, so he's kind of uh, in a bit of a lonely race at the moment, back in back in 13th, but that's okay. Given that it's race one, it kind of gives you um, some experience just to, to lap around, get used to the track, uh, find some pace, and quite often people do make big improvements in race two, having, having actually gone through race one and got the tactics. And as we see, Staniel on board, up the inside, is he going to run wide on the exit and give Risky Devil that position back? No, he won't. So a very good overtake there from Staniel, nice and clean. Risky Devil saw him coming, so good racing uh, by those two. In fact, it's been good racing so far. This is race three of the series, and it's been good racing throughout all of them. Haven't really seen a great deal of dirty behaviour or um, anything like that, and that's that's really what we're looking for, especially in a series like this where there's no. Um, specific sign-ups. If we see anyone that comes in and uh, and really carries on too much, and um, and races too dirty, it's just a reality that we. Uh, yeah, I have the ability to just sort of block them from jumping into the end, any of the future races. So it's kind of a self-regulating series, I suppose, if you will. Um, but so far, it's been really good. Can't complain uh, about anyone to this point. Uh, Mojo in eighth position there, just uh, going past Crenshaw, who is trying to pace himself off off Mojo, and that's a good idea. If you can latch onto someone who's kind of doing a, a bit of a better job than yourself, uh, then it's good just to follow, get their lines, copy their lines, and uh, it helps you improve, helps pick your pace up. But as we cut back up forward, Speedy Chicken has been able to just gap the field. He's got quite a substantial lead at this point. It is his race to lose. He can pretty much just take it very, very easy. But Sim has uh, not been able to shake Hippie. Hippie pushing on very hard, as I say, coming off a really good result, a win from uh, race two of round one. And I feel like he's going to actually push Sim right to the line in this race. And that's that's good. What you want is some good close racing. This is actually the longest uh, track on in the series with the slowest lap time. Um, not by a great deal over Brands Hatch, but nonetheless, it is. And uh, with these sort of slower cars, these N300 cars or any of the street cars, you could potentially run into a position on a very, very long track where, track where everyone is spaced right out. I mean, there's uh, only 16 available races in any one race. And as we saw Moldovich get stuck on the line, it cuts it down to 15. If you've got a very big race track, it becomes uh, all too easy to spread the field out to a point where no one's really racing anyone so um, but we'll cut forward and just see how speedy chicken is going we'll dive on board i can't imagine he's pushing too hard at this point his tire wear is quite good uh, again that front left is probably the worst worn around about 50 percent at this point he's got enough fuel to take him to the end but he doesn't have to try too hard here uh, he can just uh take it easy you can sort of hear from the engine revs there he wasn't pushing too hard doing anything too silly so uh it looks at this point like another comfortable win for Speedy Chicken. Uh, unless he makes a mistake, which of course always could happen, but he's got most of the front straight uh, as a lead uh, at this point. But Hippie and Sim, Hippie's actually starting to gain a little bit more on Sim, so this could be a really cracking battle uh, for that position. In fact, just in the background there, you can see Charged and Skater side by side going down the front straight. There they are. Um, Charged was able to hold the position, but it looks like Charged diving to the inside skater even 
A um, little bit of contact there, nothing too bad. Rubbing is racing, that's fine. No 10 second penalties in this league, which is nice to see. And uh, he was actually able to successfully pull that off. Um, nothing too major there. He didn't push charged out wide off the racetrack. So, yep, all fair play. A good overtaking move, uh, move there from Skater. And charged a little bit wide. I think Skater's probably got the pace overall. So, Charged will be pushing very, very hard to try and hang on to the back of him at this point. But we'll see, we'll see how that goes. There's only really, I'd say, about one lap to go. I'm tipping this lap 13 is the penultimate lap of the race. It's always hard, of course. It is a 20 minute race, not a specific number of laps. So it's always a little bit tougher to predict exactly how many laps uh, you will do. But there we go, as we see the final lap uh, come up now. As Speedy comes around to complete the race. So 13 laps was the total and a nice comfortable victory. Big congratulations to Speedy Chicken there. He's taken out a very, very good win. Um, puts another one in the bank and pulls further ahead. Speaking of pulling further ahead, Sim has actually just been able to gap Hippie over the last lap or two. So unsure if any mistakes were made there, but congratulations to Sim in second. And a very good race to Hippie in third. He was not far off uh, grabbing that. Skater managed to pull away quite a bit uh, and take fourth position. And I'm actually, I was able to just pit charged right on the line. Very, very close finish between the two of us. He got a better drive out of the final turn. Pios going seventh. We've got uh, IM3 GTR. I need to figure out how to say that name properly, don't I? So it doesn't sound so silly. We duck back to Mojo in ninth. Bilson has charged on and actually done quite well given how far behind he was in 12th last time we checked in on him. So he'll take 10th. Probably not where he wants to be, but not a bad recovery from what looks to be uh, probably two fairly major incidences he's had. Uh, Risky Devil has, has done all right. Ended up being a bit of a lonely race for him. Back in 12th position, he will cross the line. And finally, uh, Bert, back in 13th, uh, going very, very slowly at this point. And uh, unfortunately, he has run out of fuel. So you can see those hazard lights flashing there. Uh, didn't go the way he would have liked, and he's had to just limp around for this final lap. Um, he'll be a little bit disappointed, but he'll learn from that. Uh, it's one of those things you kind of have to do the maths in your head, because there is no diamond of course in your daily sport races or FIA races there's a little diamond when you're refueling that tells you where you can stop refueling to get to the end of the race there's a little bit of guesswork in this you kind of have to predict how many laps the race is going to be and therefore how much fuel you need to get you need to actually do the maths and only put as much fuel in as you need uh, back in round one race one I actually put way too much fuel in which I think a number of people did nonetheless that is the end of the race so I want to thank everybody for uh, watching again Check out all the details over on my website, charlieroscoe.com, and hopefully I'll see you all for round two, race two. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.